namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Theravada Buddhism series, Dhamma talk number nine. Today's topic is qualities of Dhamma and Sangha. There are six qualities are mentioned in the Buddha Dharma. And when we talk about Dharma, one would hear usage fairly often. Nine Dharma and ten Dharma. What nine dharma means is full part dharma, full fusion dharma, and one nibbana. When we say nine, it is lokutra dharma, super mundane dharma. And when we say ten dhamma, to those aforementioned nine dhamma, add one more. The entire body of Buddha's teaching during his 45 years of his ministry. That is ten dharma. As we say, there are six qualities to the dharma. The first one is swakato, well expounded. Ten dharma. are good at the beginning, are good in the middle, and are good at the end. What does it mean? One explanation is we started with precepts morality. That's mean the beginning starts with precepts morality and in the middle we built up concentration samadhi and at the end is wisdom that's why it said Good at the beginning, precepts. Good in the middle, samadhi, concentration. And good at the end, wisdom. Another way of presentation is at the beginning, we listen to Dhamma talks. If you listen carefully and seriously, at that, at that time, one is free of worries and anxiety. The beginning part. And 
after you have listened, you start practice. When you practice regularly and attentively, you gain peace and happiness in those periods. And at the end, one attained supreme peace, Nibbana. That's what it means by good at the beginning, listening to Dharma, good in the middle, practicing the Dharma, good at the end, attainment of Nibbana. So our elders have taught us two different ways to view it, the statement well expounded. Second quality is Sandeti call. To be realized by oneself. Of course, listening, reading, and discussion, the nine Dharma is good, but will not give you full understanding. Full understanding comes by realizing the Dharma oneself through the practice. To be realized by oneself. If you want to understand Buddha Dhamma completely, you must realize by yourself. Number three, Akali Go gives immediate result. Immediate means there's no moment in between the cause and the effect, the cause and its result. And it is very specific, this statement is. When one practice, eventually it attains a path consciousness. Path consciousness or path wisdom. And path Consciousness is the cause and the result, fruition, pala, wisdom is the effect. As soon as you attain the path, the next one is fruition, mega and pala. Of course, there are full levels of it. The first level is the first stream winner. Second level is once returner. Third level is non returner. And the fourth and final is arhatta. Path and arhatta, wisdom. It's very specific, immediate result. Number four. Ihi basiko, worthy of the invitation. Experiencing the nine dharma will produce one great joy, gratitude, and great confidence. So that you are willing, able, to invite others to say, come, come and see, investigate, and practice. You will 
willingly and happily and confidently invite others. Because through your own realization, you know the Dharma can withstand any kind of probing or testing. Such a confidence. Number five, Opanayiko. Fit to be brought to oneself. One need to practice until the Dharma arises in oneself. Without delay. In the scripture, there's one expression. If you are pierced with a spear, pull the spear out later. Practice first. That kind of urgency is needed. You must practice till you attain, achieved the wisdom. Nine Dharma experience internally will eliminate the rounds of birth and death. In other words, the spear can kill you only one life if you don't have the Nine Dharma, you will die many, many uncountable lives. That's why one can forsake one death but practice. That's the expression, but that's a reason. Number six. To be realized by the wise. This nine dharma can be realized by the noble persons, Riya. In this very life, that's one of the quality. So there are six quality of Buddha Dharma. The next one is nine qualities of Sangha. In here, when we say Sangha, it's referring to the Ariya Sangha, Noble Sangha. One, Supadipano, the true way. These Sangha are fully endowed with the three pieces of training Sila training, Samadhi training, and Binya training. Morality, concentration, and wisdom, which is the true way. That's a true and correct way. The Sangha practice true and correct way. Two, Uchu Patipano, the strict way. This area Sangha has abandoned all unwholesome tendency, agenda, strategies, and live in the straight and precise practice of the three pieces of training. Living with these three trainings are straight and precise, no detour, no agenda. 
Number three, Nyaya Patipano, the way to Nibbana. One practice is this three pieces of training. Why? To attain supreme peace, Nibbana. These Arya Sangha practice this precept, concentration, and wisdom to attain Nibbana, supreme peace. Number four. Samisi Patipano, the proper way. One practice these three pieces of training, the proper way, which deserve respect by all. Okay? That three pieces of training, which is the true way, straight way, way to Nibbana. Are also called proper way. This proper way deserved respect from all. And this Ariya Sangha practice the proper way. So they also deserve the respect. But it is the Dharma. Number five. Ahu Neyo. Worthy of gifts. These Ariya Sanghas are worthy of accepting gifts. Brought from far distance. Six, Bahu Neo, worthy of hospitality. They are worthy of hospitality, which we all intended for guests. Okay. When a guest comes to your house, you give great hospitality. And these Monks deserve great hospitality. Number seven, Deki Neo, worthy of offerings. These monks are worthy of receiving offerings, giving by the lay people with the intention for a better existence in the next life. Some people, their attitude is such, oh, we don't have much parami, we are far away from Nibbana. So we will do acts of generosity so that we have good karma and have a better existence in the next life. That is Dakineo, worthy of offerings. Number eight, Ichili Karniyo, worthy of preferential salutation. It's worthy of receiving honor and respect from the human from Dewa and Brahma. Number nine, Anuttaram Pounya Kittam Loka Sati, Ansapas Field of Merit. These monks are compared uh, with a great fertile ground. You see, in a great fertile ground, whatever you grow, you plant, 
they sprout beautifully and strongly and firmly. Just like that, these monks are the good fertile ground for the world to grow their good karmic seed. You plant your karmic seed and they are the perfect ground. Those are the nine qualities of Sangha. The qualities of Buddha, nine of them, Dharma, six, and Sangha, nine, were expounded in the Dajaka Sutta, discourse on banner or flag. at the monastery of Anattapindaka at Chattas Group near Savuti city. That's where the Buddhists talk this discourse. In there the Buddha stated long ago so to speak, once upon a time, there was a great battle between the Dewa and the Asura. Loosely saying, more like angels and fallen angels. Before the battle started, the king of the Dewa his name is Saka, King Saka, gave a battle cry speech. If fear, trembling and terror strikes you in the battle, look at the crest of my banner. But if you are not near me, look at the banner or the crest of the General Bajabadi. If not, look at the banner of the General Varuna. If not, look at the crest or banner or flag of General Isana. Those are his three great generals. He was battling along with them. And if you look at the crest of my crest or my generals, fear and trembling will disappear. That's what the Saka said. And in the Sutta, the Buddhists carry on. Buddha stated, those who look at the banners of the Saka in general, fear, trembling and terror may or may not disappear. Some great, some no, they're still scared. Because they are not free from lust, ill will, and ignorance. The king and the general themselves are subject to trembling, subject to terror, and they still run away, subject to running away. And after he opens with that, the Buddha talk about the qualities of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And the Buddha said, whatever fear, trembling, or terror that would arise in you, remember and reflect the qualities of the Buddha 
all the qualities of the Dharma, all the qualities of the Sangha, and the fear, trembling and terror will disappear. Why? Because the enlightened one is free from lust, free from ill will, and free from ignorance. He is without fear, without trembling, and without terror. And he does not run away. So, yet the monk said, O oh monks, because this is the situation when he was talking to this monk. Probably a group of monks are going into the forest for meditation. O oh monks, when in a forest or at the foot of a tree or a secluded place, Remember the worthy ones. No fear will arise in you. If not, remember the Dharma that leads to the salvation and is well taught. If not, remember the Ariya Sangha, the unsurpassed field of merit. Thus, in you, who remember the Buddha or the Dharma or the Sangha qualities, fear, trembling and terror will never come. So, that is the essence of the content of the, the Jagga Sutta. Discourse on crest, banner, and flex given to a group of monks who are going into the far deep forest for meditation. And a lot of Buddhists, we do many, many. We reflect on Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha qualities every day. We recite these things. Also, we repeatedly say out aloud or say it in thoughts the qualities of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. It's called Buddha Nusati or Dhamma Nusati or Sangha Nusati. Say, may all of you who are stricken with fear and terror in your meditation or in a far secluded place, reflect on these. Buddha himself told us that the fear will be quiet down and there will be no more trembling and terror. May all of you be able to practice mindfulness and sight meditation and attain enlightenment as soon as possible. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you very much.